Malaysia's biggest bank is getting larger and looking to become a regional powerhouse in Asia. Maybank just spent one and a half billion dollars to acquire Singapore's Kim Eng Holdings. Here to tell us more about the firm's growth strategy and what's happening in Malaysia with a CEO sit down is the head of Maybank, Abdul Wahid Omar. Great to have you with us on Taking Stock. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Pim. For those that don't know the story of what is happening in Malaysia, just step back and talk about the economic growth and who are the big players in the country right now. Right. Uh, Malaysia is going through an economic transformation uh, towards a high income economy. And by that, it's uh, measured in terms of um, uh, GNI, gross national income per capita, uh, from 7,500 US dollars now to 15,000 US dollars. So it almost dub more it's, than double. It's doubling over the yeah. next uh, 10 years uh, until 2010. Uh, and we do want to become a developed economy. And um, to achieve that, um, the government has uh, launched an economic transformation program um, that will involve some 440 billion US dollars of projects to be implemented. Now that 440 billion dollars that dollars is going to those US dollars that's going into these projects, yes. where is most of that money going to come from? Well, um, 8% will be public funded, but 92% will be funded by the private sector. And um, about 70% uh, of that will come from the domestic um, private investments and um, about 30% uh, from uh, foreign direct investments. All right, so you have rising incomes in Malaysia, a government program in order to boost the economy and its infrastructure. What about Malaysia's role as a regional trading hub? Well, um, Malaysia as a country, notwithstanding our growth, uh, we're still small. Uh, but if you combine Malaysia with the other nine ASEAN countries, then we become uh, a truly an economic powerhouse. Um, ASEAN uh, is um, an economic block of uh, 10 countries, um, currently with um, a GDP of uh, 2 uh, trillion US dollars. Uh, we are growing at the rate of 6% per annum. Um, we have sizable international reserves, more than 600 billion uh, US dollars, uh, 600 million people in this region. Um, so uh, it is an economy which is uh, even bigger than India. Um, so within that context, uh, Malaysia is a key uh, member of uh, a growing ASEAN economy, uh, which is uh, bound to grow for that. All right. Now, I imagine that Maybank wants a piece of this. And how does the strategy of acquiring uh, operations in Singapore fit in? Well, um, if you're looking at um, ASEAN as a growing e economy, uh, we believe that ASEAN could do with a number of strong, very well capitalized, very well managed regional banks. And that's where we, Maybank, come in. Um, we currently have operations in uh, seven ASEAN countries. And with Kim Eng, that brings in another country, which is Thailand. Now, we have both. Uh, retail banking and wholesale banking operations. Um, our wholesale banking operations, especially investment banking and equities, uh, so far have been restricted to Malaysian operations. Kim Eng, however, brings with it the, um, uh, the regional presence in investment banking and in uh, equities. So uh, Kim Eng is uh, number one in Thailand um, and, and number two um, in the in the Philippines, uh, number three in the Indonesia, number four in Singapore, uh, and um, we are also number four in Malaysia at this moment and growing. So, collective. So, so, would this be also to target uh, capital raising among your clients? In other words, clients that previously had come to you and said, look, we're looking to raise money, we mm -hmm. want to do it. Do you have the network? Do you have the operations in place to make this happen? You kind of had to throw up your hands and said, not yet, we're building it. And so you decided to go out and make this acquisition. Uh, absolutely. I think um, with the Kim Bing and Maybank combined, uh, we now have the capability to dispute uh, products, um, equities, not only within the ASEAN region, but also uh, into the other financial centers of the world. I'm talking about about Hong Kong, about um, Shanghai um, later, uh, and London, New York as well. So what kinds of industries are you going to focus on in the region? Well, um, we remain focused uh, in the retail banking and wholesale banking, uh, plus uh, some insurance operations as well. Um, in retail banking, we treat uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia as our home markets, if you like, and growingly into Philippines and Cambodia. Um, Indonesia is uh, very exciting for us. Uh, we uh, acquired BII, uh, a bank in Indonesia, some three years ago. Uh, at that point in time, we had 240 branches. 
we have since grown to 330, and um, this year we're growing by another 50, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get to 450 branches. Uh, over the next uh, couple of years. Now, Maybank controlled by the Malaysian government, so they have put their stamp of approval on this strategy. Well, uh, not quite, uh, Pim. Um, um, Maybank is the largest listed company on the Bursa Malaysia, uh, that's the, uh, the, the national stock exchange. Um, we are the largest uh, in terms of market capitalization uh, of 21 billion US dollars. Um, our shareholders are mainly uh, institutional holders. Uh, I must say that um, there is uh, there are a number of um, mutual funds uh, that are managed by PNB, uh, and that is the National uh, Unit Trust uh, Management Company. The unit, the unit yes. trust management yes. company of, but, of Malaysia. Uh, but the, the, the unit trusts are owned by 10 million uh, people of Malaysia. Uh, we were talking about the strategy acquiring a bank in Singapore. What is the strategy? in terms of China, because you've always got to look at their trade and their ability to influence events in Asia. What's the strategy of Malaysia in China? Yeah. Well, China is ASEAN's uh, largest trading partner, uh, and uh, we believe that we could help facilitate the, the trade between Malaysia and China and ASEAN and China, for that matter. So we have a branch in Shanghai uh, and a representative office in Beijing. Uh, and it is our hope to be able to convert uh, the rep office in Beijing into a branch. What is the timetable for that? Um, uh, we're going through the consultation with the regulators and making sure that things are in place uh, before we uh, do that. All right, now as the head of Maybank, can you give us your perspective on international currencies right now? You know that there is a lot of wrangling over whether currencies like the U.S. dollar are undervalued or mm -hmm. overvalued. There's been a lot of criticism, Secretary of Treasury Timothy Geithner talking about the U.S. dollar versus the Chinese renminbi. What has been the effect on Malaysia? Well, uh, Pim, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can uh, share with you our perspectives from the fundamentals perspective. Uh, I think if you look at uh, the reason why a lot of people uh, go for U.S. dollars uh, is because uh, most of the trades in the world are being uh, denominated in U.S. dollars. Uh, but you will see that uh, China is beginning to encourage um, their trading partners to denom denominate the trading uh, in uh, bilateral currencies, whether in renminbi or in the other currencies. So what uh, that will do will be less reliance on US dollars um, as the currency for trading and therefore um, eventually uh, there'll be less need to have so much US dollars uh, in their reserve currencies. Does that present a challenge to you at Maybank because if your trading uh, customers are going to come to you and say look we want to finance a new project but we want to finance it using Chinese renminbi is that a particular challenge to you right now um, because the Chinese currency is controlled in value by the government in China? Uh, no, I think uh, over time, um, I remember it will be uh, set afloat. And uh, I think, again, at the end of the day, uh, the more trade is being denominated in uh, renminbi, the more liquid uh, will the currency become and uh, the easier it is to raise uh, financing in renminbi uh, as well. But I think at this moment, um, uh, most um, uh, corporates, um, most projects are using either the local currencies or US dollars um, to fund, uh, given the relatively low interest rate environment and the ability uh, to lock in uh, long term uh, funds at the reasonable pricing. Interest rates. Tell me your perspective on interest rates because we seem to have a policy, at least in the United States, interest rates are at historic lows. We see loaning your money to the US government will bring you about 3.17, 3.16%. What's the outlook for interest rates in Malaysia? Because there's a huge demand, as you just said, yep. growing consumer population there. Uh, let me talk about ringgit interest rate. Um, the, the overnight policy rate was uh, recently increased by 25 basis points to 3% now. Uh, and we reckon that uh, until the end of the year, uh, there'll be another 50 basis points increase to 3.5%. Um, and we reckon that that's um, an optimum level uh, to balance between the need to uh, keep it low to encourage growth and yet um, sufficient, 
sufficiently high uh, to encourage uh, people to continue to uh, save. Are you concerned now, about food inflation? Are you worried about um, that seeping into the economy? Um, to some extent, yes. Um, no, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index in Malaysia, is already at 3% now. Uh, there is a possibility that uh, it may go up to about 3.5%. Uh, but I think overall, uh, given the fact that the Malaysia itself is a major producer of commodities, um, that tends to balance it a bit. So I think the overall impact we think will be relatively muted. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Abdul Wahid Omar, the head of Maybank, sharing your thoughts and your insights about the future of Malaysia and Malaysia.